Have you ever wanted to have a 49 inch super ultra wide monitor? I owned this one for 20 months or so and I cannot wait to share my experiences. Hello, I'm Dr. Sam, this is Dr. Sam's Health, and today I'm going to have one of these unusual videos when I talk not about health, not about nutrition, not about exercise, but about gadgets. If you follow my channel, likely you have noticed that from time to time I make a video about a laptop, about an iPhone, about something like that, and today I would like to make a video about this 49-inch super ultra-wide monitor by Samsung. But before we begin, I have to make my regular disclaimers, which do not really apply to this kind of videos, but I still feel I should make them. First of all, I'm a medical doctor, but I do not provide any kind of medical advice over internet, especially over YouTube or at my website drsamshealth.com, by the way, check it out. Also, obviously, I express certain opinions, which are usually well-intended and well-researched, but they do not necessarily represent the opinions of my regulatory bodies, my colleges, my universities, my profession in general. Also, since we are going to talk about a specific device, I would like to make a special point that it's not a sponsored video. I purchased this monitor just for my personal use. I used it as a customer for 20 months or so. And today I just would like to share my customer experiences with you. So there are no advertisement elements to it. And literally everything I talk about is just my personal experiences. And I hope that it will be helpful to you or for your needs if you are about to purchase a monitor like that. And lastly, I would like to explain myself a little bit. A lot of people are asking me why do you even make this kind of videos on a health-related channel. I know it doesn't make much sense, but I really wanted to make this kind of videos and I didn't feel like making a separate channel for this kind of videos would make much sense. And uh, also, there are a couple of other reasons. First of all, I feel that I have a very unique taste in things and sometimes I get some cool devices I'm very passionate about technology and I feel like uh, some sort of unbiased non-sponsored opinions are actually very important for people like yourself who are looking into potentially buying a huge monitor like that and uh, if you go on a website of of the manufacturer or you check the reviews on Google or on YouTube or whatever, a lot of these reviews will be sponsored. And uh, I'm going to provide you with some sort of a niche, unbiased review on something that you really consider to buy. And in addition to that, sometimes I feel that I cannot provide the proper customer feedback to the manufacturer by means other than making a YouTube video. For example, my first review I think was about HP Spectre 360 and uh, the reason why I really wanted to make it for a while was because I owned three laptops, exactly the same ones, because it was effectively a defective machine and I couldn't even post a review on the HP website because they would moderate it and uh, I don't want to accuse anybody of anything but I couldn't see my own reviews there. So I assume that you know, the system is kind of rigged and um, it would totally make sense for me to share my experiences on my YouTube channel with yourself. So, without further ado, let's talk about this monitor. A little bit of a background, I purchased it in 2019, around November, December. I was building my new rig, which was intended to work with uh, videos, so as I've got this YouTube channel, I do some video editing and I want to have some sort of a very powerful machine. Also, it would be something that would allow me to do a lot of statistical work, quite comprehensive analysis, and sometimes, as you know, I play video games, so I felt that I could get something cool, effective, uh, with a lot of processing power, so I got myself this rig that I still use. And, by the way, uh, that was the time when I purchased my 2080 Ti video card, Please check out my video on that. But also, I have been using prior to that a pretty large ultra-wide monitor by Acer. I think it was 34, 35 inch model, which was pretty good. It had some technical issues, but it was sorted out and I used it for a couple of years and I really enjoyed it. So later on, I realized that Samsung makes something even bigger. Something that is 49 inch super ultra-wide monitor, which was like amazing thing, at least on paper, and I felt that it would help with the video editing because I've got a very long um, timeline here, uh, it would help with working with huge tables, and obviously it would give me some very immersive experience if I were to play video games. 
So I purchased that one and um, I almost immediately regretted it just because like a couple of months after buying it Samsung started making G9 Odyssey which is a very cool monitor it's the kind of a descendant of this one it's more curved and uh, if I were to buy something like that I would definitely buy uh, Odyssey G9 but that is what I have and obviously I'm going to talk about this monitor by the way I already mentioned the curvature and this one is not as curved as I would like it to be but uh, I don't think that the main issue of this monitor is, is its curvature. Actually, spoiler alert, I'm gonna get rid of it and uh, it's not because of the curvature or technical characteristics. I do believe that the main issue of this monitor is the super ultra wide form factor. Okay, now I think we're ready to talk about the cool features of this monitor, which of course it has plenty of. The most obvious, the most impressive feature is obviously its size, sheer size, 49 inches is a lot. And pretty much every single person that has ever been to my place made comments about this monitor, asked me lots of questions, and that's in part the reason why I'm making this video. Everybody would ask where I got it from, is it as cool as it looks, is it worth it? The answer is no, it's not practical, and I'll explain why. So, this size is impressive, but it comes with couple of drawbacks. It comes with a nice stand and together with the monitor the stand takes a lot of space. So it's not very easy to manipulate, not very easy to move and uh, at the same time it has a huge footprint so if you're gonna have this monitor on a stand on your desk like you'll have to sacrifice a lot of desk space. So I thought that the good solution would be to have a swing arm and it turns out that the monitor of this size comes with a huge weight. I think it's around 33-35 pounds and unfortunately a standard heavy-duty swing arm was not able to hold it. I had to buy another one and I literally had to spend several hundred dollars on a swing arm, which is not something I would expect to pay on top of the price of the monitor. So if you're gonna buy something like that and if you're gonna use a swing arm, know that you have to buy a special one. Since we're still on the subject of swing arms and stands, the stand for this monitor looks pretty cool. It has uh, a nice hook for headset. If you feel like you can put it there behind the monitor, out of sight. Uh, but I don't think that it's a very practical fit because most of the people would have difficulties physically reaching out to that. Also, since we're talking about the back of the monitor, the back looks amazing, uh, unless you're using it with a swing arm because uh, the design of the stand is pretty cool. It has a glow and ring. From, the, from behind, this monitor looks really, really cool. The only problem is that 99% of the time you don't look at the back of the monitor, right? You look at the front, you are facing the screen. So I'm not sure how cool that side of the monitor is and how important it is, I, would, I should say. But uh, for your knowledge, actually, even on their website, when they advertise it, they have pretty neat pictures of this monitor and they often take pictures from behind because it looks pretty impressive, very uh, technologically sound. Okay, let's get back to the cool features, the ones that we see. First of all, the resolution The resolution is pretty good for this kind of monitor. It's um, 1440p and it has a very neat aspect ratio of 32 by 9, which I hoped to be impressive and very practical because of the tasks I was going to uh, perform using this monitor, but it turned out to be its major drawback. Again, I'll explain later. The resolution is 1440p over 5120 pixels, so it's pretty neat. Uh, it has high refresh rate, I think it's 120 hertz. Now they make much faster monitors, actually G9 has a, uh, has a refresh rate of 240 hertz. It has a pretty good response rate. Uh, it, again, it's a gaming monitor, at least on paper, so uh, they have lots of features that gamers will appreciate. I don't game that much, but I feel it's important to mention that. Also, if you're a gamer, likely it would be important to know that it has FreeSync and it's G-Sync compatible. And the last but not the least feature is HDR. It supports HDR, I think it's HDR 1000, and it is at least on paper, is supposed to give you a very good immersive experiences, very saturated dark cars, and so on. Now we have covered all the features, 
let's talk about the actual performance of the smart grid. And now let's start with uh, productivity software, something like Microsoft Office, something that I spend like 80 to 90 percent of my working time working with. So let's start with Microsoft Word. As you can see, I've got this uh, book of mine, Dr. Sam's No Nonsense Guide to Weight Loss. I'm working on it, check it out in a couple of months, I hope to publish it. But it give, uh, gives us a good opportunity to actually show you how, how it looks like. So you can see that this monitor is quite wide and that is the problem. Uh, you will see it again and again pretty much with every single application I'm gonna show you. As you can see, we're gonna have two, three, sometimes even four pages presented on one screen, which sounds like a nice thing, but at the same time, none of these pages is fully displayed. And uh, here you start seeing where the problems originate. If you are a writer, you write on these pages, uh, you will have to either scroll up and down, or you can put this Microsoft Word in a, a one-page mode, and then you can see that this page is pretty small and it's very hard to work on it. Uh, and actually, um, in this kind of scenario, just like most of the space of the monitor is not actually used appropriately. And um, because of the sheer width of this monitor and the aspect ratio, you've got very thick um, ribbon in Microsoft Word and all Microsoft applications. And again, because of the resolution not being kind of sharp enough, not being detailed enough, it's actually very hard to work in, with one page fully displayed on a screen. Finally, you can put in a like, page width mode and that will be just like, too big. You all literally have to move away from this monitor. And, you know, there will be quite a few things I will show you with different uh, software pieces, but my main thing that I noticed is that in order to properly adjust this monitor, uh, I feel like I have to move back and forth a lot uh, because some things are too small, some things are too large, and it's almost never at the level of comfort. I might be running ahead of myself, but again, the problem with this monitor is it's super ultra wide factor. Not a single piece of software I work with is optimized to work with super ultra wide monitors and because of that you will almost always feel that things are not optimized, not comfortably located on the screen. So let's switch to Microsoft Excel. So I've got this uh, large tables I was mentioning in the very beginning. I've got one of these here. Likely you cannot see what is reflected there, but it's actually very hard to work with it too, because it's too wide. And uh, if you are working with a monitor like that, you can either be close enough to properly see stuff on your screen, or you, can, you have to move away so that you can have a full picture. Or you, you can sit here, just move from go, move your head from left to right or from right to left in order to try to capture everything. None of these modes gives me a comfortable feeling of like being in my element. I didn't know how to describe it, but again, I literally feel physical discomfort after a while, after like 10-15 minutes of working uh, next to this monitor. At this point, some of you I know for sure will say, well, you don't have to have it expanded to the whole screen. That is very true. I can uh, reduce the size of the window, I can adjust it, but I don't like running things on my screen this way. And by the way, that's one of the problems. I have just clicked on PowerPoint and it expanded completely to the whole screen. And that happens like every other time I'm trying to move it. So. I understand that this kind of monitor is supposed to use tiles or use uh, proper uh, management of apps in such a way that you know you can have something here, something here, and something here, like three apps open at the same time, and you can work with them separately. Personally, I do not believe in multitasking, and uh, this kind of 
approach to your workload doesn't make much sense to me it's not convenient and there is always something that you have to think about extra and quite frankly this monitor is just a difficult monitor to work with and i have just uh, serendipitously opened the um, microsoft powerpoint i've got these slides here it's nice to work with this uh, with with powerpoint uh, on this monitor obviously but again most of the space in this monitor is not used at all you cannot really maximize stuff and of course we've got this uh, preview section which I use a lot because when you have a long presentation when you're talking for an hour an hour and a half you got like 70 slides there it's nice to scroll and here we got the situation when we've got this ribbon which is visually separated by a foot from the actual slide so I'd be much better off working with uh, reduced size window and again uh, I understand that most of the people would work in this kind of mode, but the question that arises naturally is why the hell am I using such a wide monitor instead of using two or even three 27 inch monitors? And this monitor, by the way, they say it's like two 27 inch monitors without a bezel in the middle. Quite frankly, at this point, I would say that I would rather use a 27 inch monitor or two or three. Uh, again because effectively what you're using is just the space that is corresponding to a typical 27 inch monitor okay clearly this monitor does a so-so job with productivity software let's talk about video editing i told you that i purchased it in part because i was going to do lots of video editing and i was thinking about having a long timeline here we go here is the cyberpunk cyberlink power director that i use for my videos I can put a lot of um, uh, video snippets in the left side, it has several panels, but maybe you cannot see it clearly, but I'll explain, I'll walk you through this thing. This monitor again is super wide, you can have a very long timeline here, but the problem is again the height. The height is too small so that, for example, the preview window is not allowing you to have a decent preview. With a very large monitor, you have a small preview that would be exactly of the same size as if you were using a 27 inch monitor. Also, uh, we've got this timeline section where you can put tracks like video tracks, audio tracks, and usually I need like three at least, sometimes four or five tracks. And with such a small height of this monitor, you cannot really use more than two. And if you start using the third audio or video track, you have to scroll here and there, and that becomes a little bit more problematic. So honestly, I would be much better off with a just large uh, monitor with a regular aspect ratio. Also, I mentioned the screen resolution being a big issue. When you are doing video editing, obviously you would like to have a very high resolution monitor. This one is 1440p, and as I said, originally it's not enough. The reason for that is that effectively the screen, uh, the preview that you're working with is in like, I don't know, 600p, 720p, and uh, it's nearly impossible to work with 4K videos. Obviously you can work with 4K videos, but you cannot really appreciate the quality of the video when you are editing it and when you are playing it. So for this purpose, this monitor quite frankly sucks and I don't think it has like a perfect uh, color, gamuts and so on. I'm not even going to get into all these details because I'm not that professional and it doesn't really matter to me. Moreover, I made a video in 4K, Dr. Loses Weight, the movie, and you can watch it on YouTube in 4K, but even myself, the guy who created this video using this monitor, cannot watch it in 4K. Speaking of watching videos, let's watch some videos. And here we go, the very video I've been talking about. It was filmed mostly in 4K, it was edited in 4K on this monitor, though it's not the right thing to do. It was posted on YouTube in 4K and uh, it took like a, I don't know, over a day for YouTube to process it. But now it's available and here how it looks like when I watch it uh, on this wonderful monitor with an amazing bandwidth of uh, internet speed. 
We've got two sides of the monitor that are not used at all. And we've got the window that is likely around 720p. Obviously we can put it in full screen and it will still look like that. We'll have two large chunks of the monitor that are not used and I'll make a special point. Actually two. First of all, I can even see from here that there is a light uh, artifacts that are happening on this monitor, but it's not the most important thing. The most important thing is that effectively I'm looking at 27 inch monitor right now. So for video consumption, whether it's YouTube and actually whether it's like Disney Plus, Amazon Prime, if it is Netflix, you still would be experiencing the same experience as with the 1440p 27 inch monitor. And if you want a good monitor for video consumption, you need something 4K with good gamut and uh, with 16 by 9 screen resolution rather than something like that. Also, since we are on the subject of videos, I realized that I turned off the sound so that my own voice would not interfere with what I'm saying right now. But I realized this, this monitor has one major issue, at least for me. It doesn't come with uh, built-in speakers. And a lot of people will say that, you know, if you are enjoying good sound, if you want something special, you have to buy a separate set. Yeah, I know, I bought them, here they are. But all my previous monitors had built-in speakers, and that was amazing, because you can have a very nice minimalistic design. And this monitor doesn't have them, so I had to buy a set of speakers, very nice ones, but they occupy space, and you have to clean them from time to time, dust off, and uh, in general this whole setup gets messy visually, and I don't like it. And speaking of uh, video, video quality, video quality or like the way the video is presented to you on this monitor is pretty neat, but it has a couple of issues. First of all, sometimes when you turn it on or it, the, your computer goes off the sleep mode, there is some flicker on the screen that you cannot do anything about other than just like waiting for a couple of seconds. Not a huge issue, I unfortunately couldn't catch it with the camera, but uh, I just wanted to let you know that there are some technical issues potentially. And also sometimes when a computer wakes up, the cores uh, are very distorted. It looks like almost like posterized, a cartoonized version of what you're gonna see normally and I have a video snippet of it that I managed to film on my iPhone. Okay, before I move to my next subject, let's do a little bit of a check what we have reviewed. We have reviewed the features of this monitor. Technically, it's a pretty neat machine with a couple of drawbacks. In terms of productivity software, it does a so-so job. Some people might take some sort of advantage of it. Personally, I do not enjoy it a lot. Uh, for video editing, this thing is not particularly good. Actually, it sucks. I'm sorry, Samsung. Great monitor, but for video editing, for my purposes, it's very inconvenient to use and it's impossible to edit stuff in 4K. For video consumption, it's not a good monitor. Again, you would be better off with a 27-inch monitor for most of the tasks that I have listed. But ultimately, this monitor is positioned as a gaming monitor. And I must admit that when I was buying it, I was thinking about Cyberpunk 2077 and the ability to play video games with an amazing immersion effect. I don't play video games much. I was expecting to be maybe like several percent of my time in front of this monitor to be spent on video games, but since sometimes I do enjoy video games, I really wanted to play them in a fantastic resolution uh, on a fantastic monitor. So let's try playing some games. Let me start with The Witcher 3, one of the most famous games that I've played ever. I really love this game and I want to show you something right away. This game actually allows you to play in a 32 by 9 aspect ratio, but the menu, as you can see, is already showing only in the center of the screen. So there are like two black sides that are not covered by anything. And uh, while I'm loading the game that I played like a couple of years ago, uh, you can see that even the cinematic intros, lots of stuff is not optimized for this kind of screen resolution. 
Uh, nevertheless, the game is here and you can see how amazing it looks. It does look absolutely amazing in part, in part because you cannot physiologically see the whole screen. So here is a unique scenario or a unique situation when you are sitting close to this monitor. It's way, way better than playing on 27 inch screen. You've got very wide screen and it gives you the sense of you not being able to see everything at once like in real life. So you can see how The Witcher looks like. Uh, I guess my character carries too much stuff, but the game looks amazing. It's in maximum settings. I don't know the frame rate, but likely it's well over 100 on 2080 Ti. Uh, we got all the effects. By the way, I'm looking for the update for this game that hopefully will be released this year. CD Projekt Red is working on PS5 version of the game. But along with that, they promised us an enhanced version that will have ray tracing on PC. And I'm literally looking forward to see this game in its in its magnificent glory with ray tracing. So, let's switch to another game, also by the same company, CD Projekt Red. Here we go, Cyberpunk 2077, the game for which this monitor in part was bought. I actually turned on this sound so that you could hear what is going here on the screen. And already you can tell that you have the same problem as with The Witcher 3 and with pretty much every other game. We've got two black sides. Uh, unoccupied by anything during the during any kind of cinematic uh, intros or intermissions and that takes you out of the immersion but let's play the game for a second and here we go cyberpunk 2077 at its glory with ray tracing at maximum detail at 1440p over 5120 pixels uh, my video card allows me for like 50 60 fps sometimes it goes lower the game, I kind of like it, but likely you've seen my video on that. If you haven't, by the way, check it out. Um, there are a number of negative things I can say about the game. I'm still waiting for some updates. One of the idiotic things about this game is the, is the driving experience, which is terrible. But a couple of things that I have to say. First of all, the widescreen experience is good. For the game like that, it's amazing. The funny part is that monitor has a refresh rate of 120Hz and um, I cannot use its full potential in a game like that. Likely I need a much more powerful video card. But something that just crossed my mind is that I actually wanted to stream it when the game was just released. And I realized that I cannot really do it, or it would be very difficult to do something like that, because of the screen resolution. The aspect ratio is so unusual that it would be very difficult to go directly to, I don't know, Twitch, YouTube and to stream there because you would have either to cut out the middle part of the screen or you would have to somehow shrink the odd resolution of this monitor into a regular 16x9. I've never streamed any video games, maybe it might sound like I don't know what I'm talking about but I remember that at that point I realized that this screen resolution is not particularly cool. Let's try the third game and that will be it. Okay, here I've got the Doom Eternal, pretty cool game. Since I'm such an old gamer, I remember good old times when I played the Wolfenstein 3D, I played uh, the original Doom of course, and now I can enjoy a game like Doom uh, Eternal on a very wide screen and at maximum settings and it gives me way more than 120 FPS. And um, let's see how it looks like. And before we get to the game itself, here's a loading screen. Again, you can see the same problem with two large black sides that are not used. Again, it takes away the sense of immersion. But the game itself looks amazing. I think I'll be better off running without monsters, just because I, I'm an old gamer. I do not game too well, but I just wanted to give you a good sense of how it looks like. Uh, the cool thing is that uh, it does support 120 uh, frames per second and uh, that is very cool because uh, for first-person shooter it's an amazing uh, resolution, an amazing feat, don't get any ghosting and so on. But 
uh, let me get out of the game so I can focus on you. Uh, I said let's have three games and it will be enough. I just realized I have to show you another kind of a game because all three games I've shown you were actually the games that utilize first-person view. Let's go with a third-person view game and uh, you will see something funny. Okay, the last video game I wanted to show to you is called The Ascent. It's a very new video game that kind of combines good old Diablo style, the third-person view game with uh, Cyberpunk 2077 or Cyberpunk uh, as a genre in general because I've been playing uh, first-person shooters or first-person video games uh, having this kind of monitor is good but when you're playing something with a third-person view it becomes a problem because the monitor is quite wide the resolution is wide and you can see that you have pretty large character in the middle of it and uh, you can have lots of stuff on the left and lots of stuff on the right but when monsters are coming from above or from below you cannot really see them and the game is pretty much unplayable just because of the way the things are set up and uh, before I got carried away and start playing too much uh, let's wrap the video game in part and let's wrap up the video in general Okay, we're back to the productivity software, so let's wrap up this video. This monitor is magnificent in a way. It is positioned as a gaming monitor, and I did enjoy playing some video games on it, but I'm not really a gamer, so for me it's like 5% of my time. In terms of productivity software, it's uh, doing a so-so job. I'm not particularly impressed. It creates a lot of distractions, and again, as I said before, some people might work around that, some people might find nice, neat ways of arranging their windows, multitasking and so on. Not my style of work. I like to have one thing on the screen, one thing only, and I would be better off having a 4K screen or something that is larger than 27 inches, something like 32, 34 inches, 35 inches, whatever, but some that is uh, higher, larger in height rather than width. So width is uh, creating more problems than uh, benefits or advantages. When we're talking about video editing, it doesn't help at all for the same reason, plus it has a technically a lower resolution than 4K, it's 1440p, and uh, video editing uh, on this monitor is not optimal, though I managed to edit a couple of videos with 4K. And actually, most of my footage is 4K originally, and then I uh, condense it to 1080p to post stuff on YouTube. Finally, uh, not final, semi finally or penultimate item is the video consumption. This monitor sucks completely for video consumption because I'll be better off with a 4K 27 inch monitor. And now, finally, the video games. I don't play them much, it is relatively good for certain kind of video games, the ones that are optimized for this resolution and the ones that are uh, first-person shooters or games with first-person view, because it gives you this immersive experience. With games with that have like map style, real-time strategies, uh, Diablo-like, uh, the Ascent that I've shown to you, it's not that optimized. and it's might even become some sort of a crippling experience and ultimately i didn't mention but there are lots of games that are not optimized for this kind of resolution and you cannot effectively play them in uh, the native resolution so the game will be like in the middle of the screen again it would be much better off with having a 4k 27 inch monitor rather than this beast of the monitor that i have here so that was pretty much everything I wanted to say about this monitor. Is it cool? Yeah, it's cool to have. It's cool to try out. It's a cool feat that everybody asks questions about, but I would not recommend it to pretty much anyone except for maybe professional gamers who play specific uh, kind of games. And even for those, I would recommend uh, Samsung G9 Odyssey, just because it has more of a curvature and higher refresh rate and uh, better HDR, whatever. So I'm going to retire this monitor and actually I just purchased a 40 uh, inch uh, Dell ultra sharp monitor. It's not a super ultra wide monitor, it's uh, 
it's an ultra wide monitor that has 2000 pixels on a vertical line it has the aspect ratio of 21 by 9 not 32 by 9 and uh, the screen resolution is 5120 over 2160 so I hope that unlike this monitor which is like 227s next to each other that Dell monitor will give me actually more screen space more pixels more pixel density and uh, ability to work with true 4k videos and at the same time it will not create too many distractions when I'm working with uh, productivity software editing videos uh, editing uh, my book or any kind of documents Excel uh, spreadsheets and so on. and this is a little preview I have unboxed this monitor assembled it and I must say that I'm already loving it it has very nice minimalistic look has an amazing screen resolution I have to play with it obviously for a couple of weeks but I cannot wait to doing so and to making a video about my first impressions from this wonderful 40 inch monitor from Dell that was it pretty much everything I want to talk about today I hope that you enjoy this kind of videos and if you do please hit the like button ask your questions share your experiences maybe you have some ideas um, after watching my videos uh, maybe you have had similar monitor and you would like to talk about that leave your reviews comments check out my website drsamshealth.com in any case subscribe if you want to see more content like, like that from me and of course there will be more content on health related topics and nutrition exercise and so on once again thank you for watching love you looking forward to seeing you again in my next videos all the very best